Good morning, gentlemen. Today we are going to this is going to be capital budgeting decision, second presentation, prepared and presented by Mr. James. Capital budgeting decisions. Capital budgeting decisions involve first the initial investment. This is all the costs involved in getting the project into an operational state. Secondly, it involves the net annual returns. This may be an income stream of either cash flows or net income. And then you have a terminal value is the residual value or scrap value of the investment at the end of its projected economic life. In this presentation, we're going to look at those three items that we have there. First, we look at the formula for determining the initial investment. The cost of the project we're going to add the installation costs minus any proceeds from sale of existing assets and we're going to plus or minus taxes on profit or loss on sale of assets okay as far as the taxes goes whether we add or minus is will be dependent on whether we get a loss or a profit on the sale of the existing assets. Okay, the cost of the new project is the cost prior to the uh, any installation. It's just the, the price of the investment. And installation costs, anything other than the price, that you need to pay to get it up and running. Proceeds from the sale of the existing assets. If you have a project that you are going to replace or modernize and you need to sell part of it or all of it before you install the new project, then the proceeds from it is going to be the amount you can sell it for. It's not going to be the book value. And it's going to be the amount that you sell it for, the selling price of it. All right. The taxes, uh, when you make a profit, or loss on sale of an asset, what happens is your income, net income will increase or decrease, will increase if it's a profit on the sale of the asset. And uh, you will have to pay additional taxes. The additional taxes will be uh, cost of the new project. If you got a loss on the sale of assets, however, that will decrease your net income because that would be an expense in your profit and loss account. And you will have to minus the taxes that you save from there. The cost of the project. We'll be looking at the course prior to the installation. So this is more or less the purchase price of the investment. When considering the course of the project, keep in mind firstly what is called sunk cost. This is cash already spent. This will not affect the project course in the future. Opportunity course. 
the return that can be earned by investing the money, that is the cost of the project, in assets the business already owns. Okay, there's an opportunity cost. Uh, work example, a business owns a warehouse which it rents out at 200,000. It decides to convert the warehouse into an apartment building at a cost of 500,000. The warehouse cost was 1 million when it was acquired 10 years ago. What is the cost of the project? Looking at the opportunity cost here, which is the 200,000 that it would rent the building for. All right? The 500,000 for the converting of the apartment into the building is part of the converting the warehouse, sorry, into the apartment building is part of the cost of the project as well as the opportunity cost that gives us a cost of project of 700,000. Notice we did not include the original cost of uh, 1 million or its book value. Right? Those are considered sunk costs. Those, that is money already spent and uh, it does not affect the expenditure on the cost of the new investment. The proceeds on sale of assets, a machine is to be replaced by a modern one. Its original cost was 10,000 four years ago and depreciation charge on it 6,000. The machine will be sold for 5,000. What is the proceeds? And the proceeds is the 5,000 that the machine will be sold for. Okay, 5,000 and notice we do not consider the original cost or the book value. The book value would have been 10,000 minus Six, which would have been 4,000. We do not consider that either. And uh, then we have the profit on the seal of 1,000. That is not considered either. Okay, so the proceeds is the selling price of an existing asset, which is replaced by the new project. Taxes and the profit or loss on sale of the asset. Taxes affect the initial cost of an investment in two instances. The book value, where the book value exceeds the proceeds in the sale of the asset, the existing asset, that is. The business makes a loss on the sale the business has a tax saving as a result of its new project. The tax saving is deducted in calculating the initial investment. Where the book value is less than the proceeds. Where the book value is less than the proceeds, the business makes a profit on the sale. There's an increase in the taxes as a result of the new project because you have to pay taxes on the profit. The increase in tax must be added to the cost of the project. Okay. Uh, you rarely ever get uh, instances of taxes on the profit or loss in our Syllabus, I haven't seen any question with it at all. But it's on the syllabus and we need to consider it.
we want to take a look at taxes on the loss or the sale of an asset. If business decides to buy, replace all equipment, the new equipment will cost one million, installation costs are one hundred thousand, and the old equipment book value of two hundred thousand will be sold for seventy five thousand. The tax rate is thirty percent. Okay, so we have the, again the costs of one million, the installation cost of one hundred thousand, and the proceeds of seventy-five thousand. The taxes is going to be on the loss two hundred thousand minus seventy-five thousand gives us one twenty-five. When we multiply that by 30% taxes, we get 375. Now this with the loss would cut cause us to have a lower income reported in the income statement and a consequential tax saving of 37,500. That's why we are minusing it here. Okay, so the initial investment would be reduced by 37,500 which brings us to 97,500. We want to look at uh, taxes on the profit of on sale of assets. Okay, this time we have the same example, but the book value is 200,000 and the equipment is sold for 225,000. It gives us a profit of 25,000. Tax rate is the same 30%. So we, when we have this profit, it will increase our income in our income statement. And our taxes are going to increase by 7,500, which is 30% of the 25,000 profit. And that would cause our initial cost to go up by the 7,500. And it becomes either two thousand five hundred. So taxes on the profit will increase the initial course of your investment. Net the second item is the net annual returns on investment and it can be presented in two ways annual cash flows or annual net income annual cash flows it means the actual cash that flow into the business and the annual net income is the income taken from your income statement. Okay, now in a problem, they can give you the net income, uh, but when you're using the appraisal methods, you have to get, you have to use cash flows. So what you need to do is to convert one to the other. Okay, so the annual net cash flow is equal to the annual net income plus depreciation. So if you are doing a problem where you require the average rate of return, we haven't done that yet. The average rate of return you is uses the net income and you are given cash flow then you will have to minus the depreciation to get that if it's the other way around and you are doing net present value which uses cash flow and you are given net income then you have to add on the add back the depreciation Sometimes you need to calculate the depreciation using the either the straight line basis or the reducing balance basis. So we need to look out for that. 
Okay, an example, a business is considering a capital expenditure project. Relevant data of the project, the initial investment is 200,000, annual net income, $15,000, estimated useful life, eight years, depreciation on straight line, no residual value. Okay. So the depreciation would be equal to 200,000 divided by eight, that would be equal to 25,000. And the annual cash flow would be 15,000 plus the depreciation of 25,000, which would equal 40,000. Okay. So if you were using um, cash flow, and the cash flow is given here and you will be required to get the net income you do the other way around you take the annual cash flow and you will minus the depreciation okay so that brings us to the end of the presentation what we'll what i'll do i'll go back over some of it.